It's safe to say these may be the most different hair types I've ever seen. I've always wanted to take a deep dive to compare these two hair types. One is arguably the straightest hair in the world, and the other is arguably the most textured hair in the world. But first, before we get into this video, disclaimer! Different does not mean better or worse. To me, it means interesting. Not all Afro hair types are the same, and not all Asian hair types are the same. There's pros and cons to everything, including hair types. So on that note, in this video, I'm going to take a closer look and compare these two unique hair textures. Let's start with the typical East Asian hair type. This hair type puts the straight in bone straight. If you take a closer look, compared to the typical Afro hair type, East Asian hair has more compact cuticle layers that are thicker. This explains why each hair strand is also a lot thicker and why East Asian hair types can be extremely low in porosity. Take a look at the hair follicle shape. It's almost perfectly round. So each hair strand grows literally perpendicular to the scalp. That's why short East Asian hair often sticks straight up. Fun fact! We are not the only ones that are negatively affected by bland and limited beauty standards. Asians are too in so many ways, but one way I bet you didn't know is with their hair. Did you know many Asians, mainly from this region, use perms in their hair? You'll be shocked how common it is. Because their hair grows perpendicular to the scalp, it sticks straight out, as opposed to growing parallel to the scalp and growing down. This stick out effect is a lot more visible with short hair. It's like a short straight afro. So many of them relax the sides and the back and grow out the top enough for gravity to take over. There are tons of videos on YouTube of Eastern Asians using relaxers or what's often referred to as down perms. The products they use are packaged differently, but it's a relaxer. In many of the videos, the person is actually comparing their results to European hair, which is unfortunate because in my opinion, it's best to embrace your unique beauty. Because just like with afros, when you embrace and love it, everyone else will love it too. The pros with this hair type is that it's literally breakage proof. As long as it's kept hydrated, this hair type will experience the least amount of breakage compared to afro hair types. Its super flat cuticles reflect so much light, it looks very shiny and glass-like. And it may have the fastest growth rate. Hmm, I've done a lot of these in this video, so I promise this will be the last one. So, side note! The way growth rate is measured in these types of studies is with a method called phototrichogram technique. It involves shaving a small area of the scalp, taking a photo, and two days or so later, taking another photo of the same area. The photos are then compared and the observed growth is measured. The problem with using this method to compare the growth rate of East Asian and Afro hair is that while Asian hair grows straight out the scalp, Afro hair literally first grows in the scalp before surfacing. The actual hair bulb is also curved and not straight. These small differences really mess up these types of comparative measurements. So for the sake of accuracy, let's change this to more length retention. With these pros, it's safe to say no one does the bone straight, symmetrical, shiny look like an East Asian. But on the other hand, the cons with this hair type is that the cuticles are so tight and compact and the follicles are so round that it virtually has no flexibility. There's no bends, no twists, and no curls. Hairstyle options are very limited. So it's a little more challenging to express your unique style through hair compared to afro hair. So while extremely low porosity hair types are more protected from breakage and for the most part very very low maintenance, it creates tons of limitations. Afro textured hair is pretty much the exact opposite. This hair type is the definition of texture. If you take a closer look, compared to the typical East Asian hair type, afro textured hair has more loose and flexible cuticle layers especially around the bends. Even if it's low in porosity, 
The bends and curls make the cuticles less stiff and compact, but they also create weak spots that are more susceptible to breakage. Take a look at the follicle shape. It looks more oval and narrow compared to East Asian hair. So rather than shooting straight up, the hair strands more so squeeze out, sort of like how this paste is coming out this tube. Each hair strand grows out with all types of texture. Just one hair strand can have multiple textures. It can have curly loops, sharp bends, spiral loops, and all types of twists and turns all on just one hair strand. So can you imagine the level of diversity on one person's head of hair? On the topic of diversity, the porosity levels of people with afro textured hair is also very vast. You can find people with super high porosity, and you can also find people with super low porosity. But when compared to East Asian hair types, due to all the bends and curls in our hair, based on just the structure of the cuticles, Afro hair can never really be as low porosity as low porosity East Asian hair. So if I'm comparing my hair to other Afro textured hair types, I would say my porosity level is somewhere over here. But if I include East Asian hair types, I would say my porosity is somewhere over here. So if it's not tight cuticles, what makes Afro hair so good at not getting completely saturated and worn out by water compared to every other hair type, even if it's curly? It all has to do with our natural oils. A study published in 2006 has shown that compared to Asian hair types, Afro hair strands have almost double the amount of external and internal oils. The quality of our sebum is also really rich. It's a recipe of esters, squalene, cholesterol, ceramides, and the list goes on and on. As you know, oils are hydrophobic. They repel water. The amount and the quality of our sebum protects our hair from taking in too much water swelling and getting weighed down. So it slows down the wear and tear caused by too much water intake. That's why our hair is often referred to as waterproof. So low porosity Afro hair types in a way get to enjoy the best of both worlds. They get the benefits of flexible cuticles while still getting the protective benefits from really high end sebum. Most of the issues we have comes from the damaging things we do to our hair and the use of products that strip the oils from our hair. So let's talk about the pros and cons with this hair type. The pros with this hair type is that it's very flexible. I like to call it a shape shifter because Afro hair can create any shape. It's so flexible that it can be worn in virtually any style you can think of. Due to our sebum quality and quantity, Afro hair types also have waterproof abilities, meaning it's really good at soaking up the water it needs and rejecting the rest. If you don't damage your hair in other ways, the wear and tear caused from oversaturation is very low compared to East Asian hair types. Subsequently, East Asian hair types tend to have issues with drying out fast due to low sebum production. Afro hair is also unique. It has so much texture that not one head of hair is the same. Each person's curl pattern is as unique as a fingerprint. So a group of people with Afro textured hair can look so diverse from one another. Compared to East Asian hair types, Afro hair is a lot more fragile. It's easier to break at each bend compared to bone straight hair. This is especially true if you put tension on it. I'm sure you can come up with more pros and cons than I did, but overall when comparing the two, a lot of the strengths and protection of Afro textured hair comes from our oils, while a lot of the strength and protection of East Asian hair comes from their hair fibers. So in a way, you can kind of see the two different evolutionary paths these two hair types took. They both come with pros and cons. Hair is not just hair. There's so many differences based on ethnicity. What works well for one may end up destroying another. Sometimes you learn a little bit more about your hair by comparing it to something that's different. So I hope this video helped you learn a little bit more about your hair. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.